Uh, Pastor Fifi Tusan Sokula Wako, you are smart. God bless you. When I Tusan Sokula, God bless you, sir. Spirit for returning me again to the altar after some good time. We bless God, we honor His name because His name is holy. I thank God for you who has managed to be here in the morning because it is not easy. There are those who have not made it here, but for you, you are here. We thank God for that. God will bless you for that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I want to take this opportunity to honor. Uh, my spiritual mother, Dr. Prophetess Manuel Avako, the pastors around, Pastor Robert Wamara, uh, the assistant pastor, Pastor Helen. Uh, you know, as I always say, Pastor Robert and Pastor Wamara, they always give us a word of encouragement. Rob, uh, sorry, Pastor Robert Wamala, I mean, they always give us a word of encouragement. Wherever we come, we find they around. You know, in life, you always need someone who is who is an example that you always see on. That even when things look to be difficult, eh, you find they are around. Even when things to seem they are not moving, you find they are around. We thank God for you people for standing for the word of God. I pray that God should really reward you. We want to thank God for the uh, for the pastoral team that are around, Pastor uh, Pastor. Brian, Pastor Elect, Brian, Wenje, and Maureen Wenje, uh, Evangelist Henry, Masiko, Apostle Ejura, uh, Pastor Fifi, who has come with us. Papa, Pastor Fifi, thank you so much for coming. I was shocked when you were here, even before me. We thank God for Apostle Isaac, Pastor Jeta Simwe. We thank God 
for the choir who are around uh, Pastor Chris Anguzu oh Pastor ah uh, I'm not Pastor Asio Goretti she's around in the house we thank God for you thank you so much for coming uh, we want to thank God for our spiritual prosperity uh, Bishop Paul Chikwem Prophetess Miriam Obina at least there is a sense of belonging they always pray for us they always pray for us. They always pray for us. Those names are serious names in Ayam. We bless God. We honor God. As I start, let me just say a word of prayer as I allow you to take your seat. Father, I want to thank you so much for this day that you have made. As David says in the book of Psalms 118, 24, we bless your name. We honor your name. We know you are here. Come and be with us here. That whatever word that I am going to share with the congregation and the saints who are here, let the Spirit of God come and be with me. Let him come and lead me. Lord Jesus, I have prayed all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the house says, Amen. You can take your wonderful seat this morning. <clears throat> you can take your wonderful seat this morning. One thank God for his faithful he is merciful in whatever kind of situation he is merciful i know you have feared you think you are not going to make it before i start you think you are not going to make it just because you have fear but i'm telling you i want to give you a word of encouragement if you came this morning and you think that situation that you are in god cannot change it that is a total lie those are the tricks of the evil one. Those are the tricks of the devil. Creating fear in you. So, make sure fear should not grip on you this morning. Whatever you think cannot be possible, it is possible with God. There is nothing that is impossible with God. It is only impossible with man. You fear because you think God cannot make it. God is going to make it this morning. Continue coming. Do not lose courage because God is faithful. God is faithful and is here. Right now is here. He's listening. He's with you. He's seeing whatever is going on in your life. So nobody should try to discourage you in whatever kind of situation. I want to thank God again for you who has come here. God has given you life. You are healthy. There are those people who are in the hospital right now. There are people who are suffering. There are people who are calling God for another chance. But for you, God has really helped you. You are healthy. You don't have money. But God has given you life. And that is the most important thing. So today, in the week, the theme has been, cast your burden unto the Lord. Cast your burden unto the Lord. This was extracted in the book of Psalms. In the book of Psalms 55. Let me first go there. In the book of Psalms chapter 55, verses 22. Cast your burden unto the Lord. You understand? That is the most difficult thing. That is the most difficult thing that human being, that flesh, has failed to believe in. The Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter 22, I mean chapter 55, verses 22, that cast your burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. This is what the Lord is saying. That cast your burden unto him. If you cast your burden unto the Lord, there is nothing that is hard for God to do in your life. I am telling you this morning. So my topic does not deviate from that. That cast your burden so that you can be restored this morning. The Lord God is just waiting for you to cast your burden unto him so that you can be established, so that he can establish you or restore whatever you think you have lost. Whatever you think is not going to be, is not going to come. The prophecies have been made in your life and you think it's not going to come. Let me tell you, the Almighty Father is only waiting for one thing. He wants you just to cast your burden unto him. Amen. That yoke that you think is too heavy for you to carry, it is not heavy for the Almighty Father. That's why I started by saying, you think you are not going to make it. You think that situation that you have in your life is not going to go away. Just that because you have fear. Nothing else. Just because you have fear. That's why you think God is not going to make it. 
But whatever kind of station you are going to, the Lord God this morning is telling you that cast your burden unto him so that he can restore you. God has never hated anyone. God has never hated me. He was the first one to love you. Before you loved him, he was the first one to do so. And that is the reason why in John 3, 16, it is my favorite verse I love so much. That's why in John 3, 16, he says, because I loved you even before you were born. You understand? Because I loved you even before you were born, even before you were formed in your mother's womb, I had to give a perfect sacrifice of my only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died for you on the cross. That was a perfect sacrifice. Let me tell you, my brother, the reason why they say that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, it is what brought Jesus on here, here on the ground. I am telling you, it is not easy. The devil is not an easy person. He would have just sent Angel Michael to come and fight him. But he said, no, this man is not a joking man. The man that we play around with is not a joker. He is a serious guy. And that is the reason why God created a serious plan, an everlasting plan, an eternal plan. That he said, my son, go. Be into the womb of that virgin woman for nine months. Be born. Go through the life of the flesh and you shall save the nation. Do you know what it takes for one to die on the cross with pain? That man was struggling to make sure that we come out of the bondage. And that is the reason why he's saying that cast your burden unto me. Our Redeemer lived. Why are you suffering? You are suffering because you know not. I am telling you this morning. You are suffering. You are in that kind of situation because you know not. That Jesus Christ died for you and he was a perfect sacrifice. Let me tell you, my sister, someone to die for you. Someone to die for you. It is not something which is a job. You know, we take business as usual. Jesus died for us. We take business as usual. Coming to church. Just, just coming to church. But one thing that I want to tell you, go backwards and see what God did. The one who sits in heaven, the creator of the universe, the creator of heaven and us, the one who even created the evil one that we fear most. He knew that the only perfect sacrifice was to send his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who is a perfect sacrifice. And he's telling you this morning that cast and your burden unto me so that I can be in position to help you. Why are we suffering? Why am I suffering? Why? Why are we in this kind of situation when God is just begging you that cast your burden unto me so that I can establish you, so that I can restore whatever you have lost? My sister, my brother who is watching me this morning, I want to repeat it again, that what brought the Son of God into this earth and he went through the life of the flesh and he suffered he suffered a pain. The gentleman went through a lot of pain. But we do not know. We do not honor that pain. We do not put respect in that pain. Many people just play around with it. Many people just play around with it. Do you know the reason why many people play around with it? When you go and read into the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 to 5, you will read about the the parables of the ten virgins. Then I am still deviating a bit. When you read about the parables of the ten virgins, the five who are given the candles and they asked for the oil, and the five who are given the candles and they failed, they did not ask, they forgot to ask for the oil. That is the kind of Christians we are these days. There are very many Christians in church, millions of them, but without the Spirit of God. We are very many in church, but Jesus is not with us. This is what I'm telling you. Because we do not, we take Jesus for a ride. We take him for granted. We take Jesus for a ride. We take business as usual. But I'm telling you this morning, this Jesus here we are talking about, who came from heaven, he came unto the earth here and he died on the cross with a lot of pain. He's telling you this morning, my sister, my brother, cast your burden unto him so that he can be in position to help you. 
Nothing else. Death is something so painful. And it is the reason why when someone dies in your family, you cry. But imagine this gentleman. He took it by a horn himself and he went on the cross and he died for you. He died for you so that your life should be well. So that you cannot suffer. But for you, you take it for granted. How often do you thank Jesus to the who have, who, for dying for you? How often do you kneel down and say, Jesus, I want to thank you so much for dying for me. Before you begin complaining, before you begin quarreling, before you begin reporting to him whatever you are going on, the pain that you are going through. How often do you do that? How often do you kneel down? I want to repeat it. Yourself, this morning when you're coming, did you, want, did you really thank Jesus for helping you, for dying for you on the cross with a lot of pain? Did you? You just thanked God, yes. But that gentleman struggled and made sure that today you can just call upon his name and you are saved. You can call upon his name. It is the only name above all names that the devil fears. There is no any name that the evil one fears. It is the only name that when you call, the evil will flee. And that's why I'm telling you, don't take it just for a ride. Don't just take it for granted. You need to take serious Jesus. And that's why in the book of John chapter 3, you know, let me tell you, in John chapter 3, 3 the Bible is clear that if you do not, if you do not accept him, verily he tells you, you shall not see his father. You shall not see him. Now, let's get back. The God is saying that cast out your body. Cast your body so that he can restore you. God promises to restore everyone. Whatever you have lost, God is telling you this morning, he can restore everything that you have lost. Whatever you think he cannot do, he can do it perfectly well. There is nothing under the sun here that is impossible with God. It is only impossible with man. And that's why I started by saying that question that you think God cannot do it, God cannot overturn it. God can overturn, God can do anything. I am telling you the truth. God can do anything. You are going through pain, but God wants you to go through it. My sister, my brother, now let me tell you this morning one thing, that God has a plan for you to move on. There is a process that God wants you to move on. Until one day, until something has died in you. And that's why he's telling you, cast that burden out of me so that I can be in position to sustain you, so that I can restore you. There is something that God wants to die in you which has not yet died. There is something that is still pending. There is something that God wants that even no man can make you dodge it. No man, no woman can make you do that situation. Can make you do that process. So you do not need to interrupt with the process of what God is doing in your life. There is way where you are moving. God says you are supposed to pass this kind of road. You are not supposed. So let me tell you this morning. When God has put a process for you, you cannot dodge it until something has died in your life. The day you will pray and cry unto the Lord. You cry, you a man, you a woman. The day you will be alone and pray and cry unto the Lord and tears come out of your face. That's when you know that indeed God is the only one that will lift you up. He's the only one that, take, that will take away that body. The day you will sit down wherever you are, when you are alone with him, and you pray and you say, God, I have come. What is it? There is no woman, no man is going to exactly make you do that situation that God wants you to go through. If he's interested in you. Not all situations, not all difficult situations that we go through, they are from the devil. My brother, know it from today. Not every situation that we go through are from the evil one. For Christian, any situation, for a born again, any situation that comes to your life, there is something that God wants you to see. There is a testimony that God wants you to give. He knows whatever you are going through. Because you accepted him as a personal savior, you are in the light. He sees you every time and again. 
When you say and you say, I am born again, you are in the light. So when you are in the light, God sees you every time and again. So any kind of person for you who is born again, it is not so bad. Not all things work for the bad. God says everything that happens to a Christian happens for the good of him. I am telling you this. Know it from today. It is only they who are in evil, those who are still in the world. When a problem comes to them, it has really come for them. But for you who is the one, for you who knows him, for you who accepted him, when any situation comes in your life, know it very well that God wants you to go through it so that you can be in position to be strong in his word. God wants you to be strong in his word. That in whatever kind of situation you are going through, you shall not back backslide. You will say, no, God, I know you are still the one. Now, let's first go and read something. In the book of Let's read something in the book of uh, in the book of uh, First Peter. It says, First Peter chapter five verse ten. Hear what the God says. God is now talking through His grace and His will to restore you. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to His eternal glory in Christ, will Himself restore and confirm, strengthen and establish you. This is what God is saying. Huh? After you have suffered a little while, the suffering you are going through is just for a little while. It's not for a long way to go. In, in the local language, they say, Okubona bona si There is no any suffering that has ever killed anybody. And that's why God himself told the devil, he said, my faithful one, Job, go and try him. That is flesh, but do not play around with his soul. And that's what God is telling you here. That And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore and confirm, strengthen you and establish you. He will strengthen you and restore you. You are worried for nothing this morning. You are worried for nothing. That situation that you are in, there is no any money that can help you to go through it. There is no any man that can help you go through it. There is no any woman, there is no any flesh that can help you go through it. And that's why he's saying, cast your burden unto him so that he can be in position to establish you.
parables of the ten virgin girls. This parable is very exemplary. It is telling you that there were five who picked the anointing, I mean the oil. They picked the oil plus the candle. But the five did not pick. The five did not. The five did just pick the candle and they left the oil behind. Now, the midnight came. When the midnight came, hmm, uh -huh, they told them to leave the candles. So when they told them to leave the candles, what happened? The ones who are wise, they leave their candle because they had carried oil. The oil is an example of the Spirit of God. The anointing of the Spirit of God. Most of us have accepted Jesus, but without the Spirit of God, we have accepted him by just accepting him with a confession. But God expects us to accept him with the spirit. And that's why he says that the parables of the ten virgins, they are those who picked the word and they did not pick the spirit. They are those who came and picked the word and picked the spirit. And when midnight came, the time for what? The time for rapture came at midnight. Jesus comes. Then they tell them to light their candles. Ah. They five lit their candles. And because they had oil, they added in the spirit of God. And the candle continued lighting it. Until Jesus came. Then the five who are foolish. Let me hope you are not the foolish one. For them, they lit their candle within a short period of time because they did not carry the Holy Spirit. They are what happened? Their candle went off. And when their candle went off, Isaac, help me with the fan. I'm dying here. Oh. When they help, when the candle was lit, for those five, for those five who did not carry the anointing, they lit their candle. What happened? The candle went off. And when it went off, they went and started asking from those people who did not forget to carry the they, they, they want the oil. When they asked, they say, those people said, no, it can't happen that way. It can't happen that way. Go and buy it from where it is sold. Go and buy it from where it is sold. Now, this one is showing you that the spirit of God cannot be shared, cannot be got from anybody. It is only you who can get it from Christ Jesus. And when he was giving them, he gave them the candle. He gave them the word. You accepted him as his Christ. And that's why I'm telling you this morning that my sister, my brother, do not be like a foolish virgin who picked the candles, who picked the word, and did not pick what? Did not pick the anointing. Did not pick the oil to keep the what? The candle burning. And when they came back, what happened? When they came back, they found where the door has been closed. When they came back, they found Jesus had entered and the door was closed. I pray that you shall not be you. It shall not be me. Who shall find when the door has been closed when you have gone to buy the word? When you have gone to look for the word? Because when they went, they told them, mm -hmm. it is not possible, my sister, my brother, go and buy it to do, from those people who are selling it. By the time you shall go to buy and come back, you shall find when Jesus has gone. And that is the time of rapture. And this is what is happening in today's church. That we are very many Christians in church, millions of Christians in church, but without Christ, without the Spirit of God. There are very few people who have the Spirit. There are very few people who have carried the candle and the Spirit of God. Very few. Most of the people you are seeing loitering in churches, they are just there in flesh. They have the candles, but they do not have the Spirit of God. There are the five stupid virgins. The reason why I'm giving you this example, it is why the reason why we are suffering. Two, we are suffering because we only come to look for God when we are having trouble. It is the reason why trouble does not end from us. Trouble will not end in your life. Or change, trouble will not end in your life if you continue only searching Christ Jesus eh? when you only have trouble. You turn God as a problem solver just. You take God to the mountain because you want to school, school fees. You take God to the mountain because you want to get married. You take God to the mountain because 
the landlord is giving you hard times. Our God is a God of everything. Our God is a God of everything. So if you come to church just because there is a certain situation that is squeezing you, putting you down, you are in the wrong place. This place is a place for a God of everything. Our God is a God of everything. When you pray to God, your problem is just part of it. You understand? Your problem is just part of that which you are going through. God himself has done many things in your life. He has given you life just by you walking here, <laughs> coming here. You take it for granted. I always say even they who have plenty of money, which you are crying for, which you are pleading for God to give it to you, they have died and left it there. The money that you are crying for, they have died and left it there. And that's why most of the Christians are going wrong. They have equated the power of the Holy Spirit when they see that Ojura has six cars. They say the man is anointed. <laughs> Look at the stupid five virgins. When you come walking, mm -mm, you are not anointed. People only want to see what, what you want to see. They want to equate you. Did you come driving? That man of God, how did he come? You come walking, <laughs> nobody, even if you're full with the Holy Spirit, <laughs> in this world today, no one will give you respect. Let them fail to give you respect. But it's only you who knows what you carry. You don't need to continue struggling in life to continue eh, explaining yourself to people who you are. Why should you waste time explaining to people who you are? Who you are, it's only God that knows. Why should you go and struggle, begin struggling because you need respect? You begin explaining to people, you know, I have a degree, I have masters, I have this, you know, even if I'm preaching the word of God, because you need respect. My brother, my sister, you are astray. You are astray. I am telling you this morning, most of us have been wasting a lot of time on this earth trying to find a way of living legacy on this earth. The earth which is not ours. We don't belong here. We are just passing. Why are you struggling to live a legacy here? Even it makes you to sin by even going to extent of saying, a man of God, I can't do anything to get money. I can't do anything. And that's why many men of God, God is always laughing at them. Eh? They are selling the word of God. They are busy selling the word of God because of that, that I can do anything to get money. And indeed, this is what is going on. God is annoyed with the church. God is annoyed with us. God is not happy with the church. I am telling you. God is not happy. I want to repeat it. God is not happy with us. Because we only look for him when we have issues. We only look for him when there is a problem. When something is burning into our life. Yes. That is good. But that is not the nature of God we are talking about. The God we are talking about is a God of everything. The creator of the universe. Nothing is too hard for him to do in your life. And that's why today he's telling you, my sister, my brother who is watching. Wherever you are. Those who are online. God is telling you that cast your burden unto me. So that I can be in position to help you. Let's go into the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17. Let's read the book of Jeremiah. Hear what it says. But I will restore you. I will restore your health. And heal your wounds. Declares the Lord. Because you are called. People have called you an outcast. But he's saying Zion for whom no one cares. God is saying people have called you every kind of name. Outcasts. People have said at that age <laughs> you think you can still buy a car. At that age. Are you sure? Are you sure my sister, my brother? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure really at that time, at that age with the, what kind of situation you are in you can still make it? Are you sure? That is the flesh. That is the voice of the evil one. That's why he's saying you, the voice of the evil one have called you an outcast. But let me tell you, my sister who is watching me this morning, do not care. Because words have never killed anybody. Do not care. People have talked. 
And they will continue talking. You are not the last one and you are not the first one. In this situation you are in, you are not the first one in it and you are not going to be the last one in it. Even Jesus who died for you passed through it. One time I was giving an example that this world is so complicated that on the day of Pentecost, do you know what happened? The same street where Jesus passed when they were busy praising him. Our son, our glory, our God, our everything. The same street where he passed going to Jerusalem. People were busy laying mud. People were busy laying palm trees, what, everything, praising him. It is the same street the next day where they passed with him, caning him seriously, crying. And everyone was despising and running away from him. So this is the same life we are in. People will praise you. The next day, they are the same people when you are into problems. They will begin to say, hey, we told him. He thought it was easy. This thing happened to Jesus. And that's why I'm reading this example. That if Jesus went through it, you are not the first one. And you're not going to be the last. Because it happened out to him. On the same street. I repeat it, on the same street. On Palm Sunday, where they praised him. They praised him when he was going to the great house of his father. The next day, they passed with him on the same street, giving him serious games, suffering. They beat Jesus on the same street and people were just watching. So this kind of situation, don't think you are the first one to go through it. That is what we call human nature and that is the power of the flesh. Do not fear the flesh. <clears throat> the flesh cannot kill the soul. It can only kill the flesh. Believe in him so that you can be in position to be restored. Ah, let's read in the book of Psalms, chapter 51, 12. Hear what this, the Lord God says. This is now David. Whom the Lord God mighty father loved so much. David the great. Hear what he says in the book of Psalms, chapter 51, 12. He says, restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with all the willing spirit. Although we may stray from the steadfast faith and obedience, hmm? it is important to restore all our life. Restoration is a recurring theme in, in scripture. You understand? When we talk about restoration, it is a recurring theme in the scripture of the word. It is a recurring word. You understand? As those who, uh, who strayed from the teaching and the love of God sought to restore their, <coughs> their divine relationship with him. God is telling you that he wants to restore you today. You are suffering for nothing. You are toiling for nothing. You are suffering for nothing this morning, my brother. Who is watching me? The Lord God Almighty is saying, come unto me, cast your burden unto me, so that I can restore and establish you. This morning, I want to come with a word of encouragement. Believe God for the very first time. Try to believe God again. Try to believe God and know he can restore whatever kind of situation you are going through. There is nothing that is too hard for God to do. I am telling you, I am repeating it. There is nothing. Because he puts it very clearly. He puts it very clearly, my sister who is watching me. The Lord God puts it very clearly. That blessed is a man who is tried. James chapter 1, 12. <laughs> when you read in the book of James chapter 1, verses 12. That blessed is a man who is tried. Blessed is a woman who is tried. If you are not tried, you are not blessed. Do not fear anything. Do not fear any situation. God wants to bless you and it is the reason why you are going through that test. It is the reason why you are going through that difficult situation. God knows that you are going through that difficult moment. You are working and yet you went to school. But because you decided to follow him, he is saying in the book of James chapter 1 verses 12 that blessed is you who is trying. If you are not tried, my sister, my brother, a waste of time. A waste of time. And that's why I always give an example and say, you cannot compare the price of a brick and a block. You understand? The price of a brick can be 1,000 and a brick will be 1,000, I mean 3,000. Why? It is made from the same material. It is modeled from the same material made by the same man. 
But because a brick has gone through something, it has gone through a process, it has gone through fire. And that's why he's saying in the book of James 1, 12, that it is only they who are tried, it is only that woman who is tried, it's only that man who is tried, that is blessed. This is not my word. It is the word of the Holy Spirit that it is only they who are tried who are blessed. We are talking this thought because we are reading the word of the Bible. Some of us have gone through it. And that's why I'm telling you that until something will die in your life, until something will die in your life, that is when God will come and do that you are going through. I am telling you, there is something that has not yet died, prayer, in your life. I don't know. You need to ask God, what is it that is supposed to die so that you can go to the next level? There is something, you, it, is, it is there in the process. A man will try to come and solve your problem. The problem that you're going through. But when God has said, Brian, this is the process you are supposed to go through to, to get it to victory. You cannot dodge it. You can't dodge it. That's why I was saying that time will come when you will pray. You will go into a closet, that situation which you are in. You will cry unto the Lord. Speak unto him. Cry. Cry. You will cry. Tears will come out of your face. That is when you will see God. That is when God will say yes. The tears that shall come from a man, from a woman when he cries. That is when you will see God. God, the God we are talking about, is a God of restoration. And that is why I say that restoration is a recurring theme in our scripture that we are reading here. And that is why I say in the book of James chapter 1 verse 12, I want to repeat it again. That blessed is a man who is tried. If you are not tried, you are not blessed. And I gave you a scripture in the book of Jeremiah 17, verses 5, whereby it says, you are a cast one, if you still bless, if you still trust flesh. You are a cast one. And a special come, you begin thinking of calling people. You don't first go to God and he gives you the vision. You go and begin looking to people. And is the reason why they switch off their phones. The other day I was giving an example that our God is a great God. is a God that you can call at any time, even at midnight. Who is that man that can give you his telephone number that call me at any time? Nobody. Even our president. Nobody. Nobody. I always say this, that it is only God that has given you a landline, a landline that even at midnight, even at one, call me and tell me your issue. I will be in position to wake up. Our God does not sleep. Amen. Men are built. Do you know the reason why people build? When they get money, they build a, a fence which is even above their houses. Because they don't want you to be disturbed. When people get money, they even forget with their telephone numbers. You ask him, tell, give me your telephone number. He knows you're going to disturb you. Say, but ha, I've even forgotten. I am too busy that even I, I, don't, I don't even remember my telephone number. That is human nature, I'm telling you. That is the man you want to trust who is going to stress you and you die before that your time comes. Eh? Let's go and read. I love this scripture so much. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Call out to me a free landline. Let me open. I, you know, I, I love that scripture so much. I want to tell you that you are suffering because you know not. You are suffering because you don't know the word. The Lord God is telling you that read the word and the word shall be in position to help you. The word is God himself. Now, you hear this. You go to the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 33, verse 3. What does it say? The Lord God has given you a free landline here. Mark it very well. If you don't, why are you suffering? When God has given you, I have told you, there is only one person, there is only one person all over the world whom you can call at any time and will answer you. There is no body. You call someone at 10 even, midnight. Say, you man, you don't respect people. You don't respect people. At this time I am resting, you know this time for resting. And you are calling me. But here God is telling you in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you the great and mighty things which you know not. 
The great promise, oh, although given specifically to Judah, but it was also given unto you to help you. This was given unto Judah, but now, because Jesus died for you on the cross, he's telling you, call unto me, and I will be in position to answer you. Why are you toiling? Why are you struggling with man? Why are you struggling with flesh? And yet God has given all the scriptures in the Bible. He says, call unto me. I can even read for you a verse in the Bible whereby he has given you an open check. You just write in your, the figures that you want. Because of, next time I will do that. These scriptures are there in the Bible whereby even God has given you an open check. He says, write whatever amount of money you want. But do you know why? <laughs> because you have fear. Because you have fear. When the word of God says, write any figure, ask anything, ask anything, God can give it unto you. <laughs> do you know what? You, be, you begin, you begin imagining you, where you come, from. your background actually. You be, your background in what pulls you backward. It is our background that has pulled most of us backward. Our background has pulled us backward. Even when the Lord God has given you an open check, he says, now you begin saying, Pastor Nayalima. Ah! Birioni, birioni, birioni. You see now, this is what he's saying. That what is that burden? What is that burden that you think God cannot solve? What is that burden that you think God cannot be in position to put right? Now, let's first read in the book of Amos, chapter 9, verses 14. And the Lord God, in the book of Amos 9, 14, I am going to be a bit fast because my time is, I think, I am almost, unless I'm guided. Now, in the book of Amos 9, 14, and the Lord God is saying, I will bring my people of Israel back from exile. They will rebuild and the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wines. They will make gardens and eat their fruits. The Lord God is saying, he will bring you back. He will bring you back from the exile. He will rebuild all the ruined whatever you are going through, whatever has been ruined in your life, God is going to bring it back. It is just accepting and knowing that when you cast your burden out to him, he will be in position to help and bring you back. What is that that you think God cannot do, my sister? What is that? Ask him. What is that that you, God, you cannot do? God can do anything. I told you that you think God cannot do that. That is fear. That is fear. That is in you. And that is the greatest weapon that the devil has been using against Christians. He puts fear in us and we think we cannot do it. Someone puts a word in you and says, like what happened to David? Let me tell you words. You have to rebuke words. You have to tell someone there and then, say, I refuse. I will make it. Do you know what? David told Saul, I can kill that man. And so said, but for you, you are just a shepherd. <laughs> you are just a shepherd. Where are you going, you man? You are just a shepherd. Eh? But the man said, I can kill that guy, no. I can destroy that man. Then said, you are a stupid man. You are just a shepherd. David said, you man, you are joking. For me, I can destroy. I can destroy. I have been destroying. The lions and... Eh? Huh? Now, for you, look at yourself right now. <laughs> you really see that even you, you really see you have failed. <laughs> you really see you have failed. But God uses certain kind of people like you who have certain kind of thoughts. God wants you. You who are right now today. God wants to use you for mighty things in his, life, in his kingdom. I am telling you the truth. So, nobody should utter any stupid word, any negative word in your life and you keep quiet. Watch. Someone says, hey, at this age, you man, you think you can still buy a car? Tell him, several. I rebuke you immediately. I am going to buy several of them. Even 20. They shall be there. Yeah, because there's nothing. That is too hard for God to do. Psalms 24, verses 1. 
He declared and said, mm -mm, the world and whatever is in it, it is mine. I made it with my own hands and my words. So why are you struggling? I say that legally the world belongs to God, does not belong to anyone. The devil is a liar. He is just trying, camouflaging and coping. But the world belongs to him. Why are you suffering? As I'm coming almost to an end, hear what it says in the book of Exodus 21, 34. The one who are opened the pit must pay the honor for the loss and take the dead animal in his exchange. The Lord God is saying, those people who have been creating pain in us, they are going to pay even if it is when. That animal, the dead animal that they are putting in our life, it is going to be exchanged. They have to take it. The dead animal that they are putting in our life, they have to take it. Time is going to come when they are going to take it. And that's why it says in the book of Exodus 21, 34, that the ones who have opened the pit must pay the honor for the loss of the dead animal in exchange. Whoever has created and put a pit for you to fall in, he is going to pay dearly. It does not matter when it is. That time is only known by God. It is only God that knows that time. You are not there to begin making God to put the timing when God is going to do it in your life. I am repeating it. Until something will die in your life, the day you will pray with pain, there is a pain that comes. There is a pain you... No, no, there is when you pray, even when you have money, even when you have food in the house, when you have... That thing has refused to come, even when there's money, even when there's everything. That thing that will make you pray with pain and tears, that is when you will see God. What shall make a woman pray while crying and a man while crying, even when he has everything? That is when God will come. Something must die in our life. Like what Jesus, God himself did. He had to give his only son to come and die and exchange everything. Something must die in your life. That's why God is telling you in the book of James 1.12 that blessed is he who is tried. If you are not tried, you are not blessed. Are you sure? You are not sure. <laughs> Delivered, you are not sure. I am seeing you are not sure. You open. I don't know. Maybe I'm just open that book, James chapter 112. <laughs> you will read later. Now, here in the book of Hosea, Hosea chapter 6, verses 1. He says, Come, let us reform to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us. But he will bind us. He will bind our wounds up. The Lord God is going to bind our wounds up. And that's why he is pleading to you. You know God is pleading. All whatever is written in the Holy Spirit is pleading to you. Believe him to be. Believe. Just believe and see the wonders. Call unto my name and you will see what I will do unto you. Give me the tithe, that 10%. And you will see what the Lord is always pleading. Because you know why? He loves you so much. John 3, 16. I repeat it again. He loves you so much that even your love for him is not there. But for him, he loves you with all his heart. And that is the reason to why he will continue and continuously pursuing you until he brings you back. Even if you want to run away. I'm telling you. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on their wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. When you give your burden unto Christ, when you have accepted Jesus Christ with all your heart, not like the foolish virgin, like the bright virgins who took the candle and they took the the oil. Eh? You will not faint. This God is saying. I am telling you today. Go and read the parables. Of the virgin. Matthew 25. From verse 1. I think up to 10. Or to 5 there. Read it carefully and well. You will not play around with God. He wants you to take his word. 
with the spirit back to live. Not just his word. The word of God is God himself. And God himself is his word. And that's why our God does not say, I beg your pardon. His word is final. He said 10%. That is it. From that time, he has never changed. Even when the economy, even when COVID came, even when our government was, exchange, was raising, uh -uh, things are bad. It has to go to 35%. Ours, the economy of God, has never changed. God has never changed. It remains 10%. The time of Noah, the time of Abraham, the time of Ed, from the creation, it has remained. That's why our God puts a promise and his promise will never change. Our God does not say, I beg your pardon. I am increasing. You know the expression really, even if you are watching. The expression is bad. My church is doing badly. I am increasing the, the tithes to 15%. Never. It will never happen. Because he says it and he puts, huh? nobody will remove that door. And that's why I say it is always very bad for those people who play around with the word of God, those who try to edit it. One time I will read it for you. That those who shall try to edit my word, they will see. You will see the curses that they will get. Huh? Our God is a God. His word is final. And that's why he's saying in the book of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, but those who hope in him, the Lord will renew them and their strengths. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, if you refuse to hope, nobody cares. Nobody cares. If you give up, nobody cares about you. Nobody will sympathize with you. So oh, sorry, you have given up. <laughs> Do you know that you would have made a, a cup of coffee for someone? When they say, man, I was a Vindemi. You have not seen. You have not seen. You understand? So when you just say you have given up, someone is very happy. So do not give up in the word of God. And that's why he's telling you here. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strengths. They will soar on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow worried. They will walk and be faint. They will not be faint. Today I am coming for you. That that yoke, as Papa said, that has, he explained it very well. The yoke. He explained it very well. He explained the yoke itself. What it means. That yoke that is seated on your shoulder, God can destroy today because it is written in the book of Exodus 14.14. 14. He promised and said, I tell you people, what you need only from me is just to stand still. Stand still and report your enemy unto me. Vengeance are for me. I will fight for you. Our God is a God of war. He loves war. And when he goes to war, victory is guaranteed. I am telling you, we are speaking some of these words, we are speaking some of these things because we have seen. Me or Cheng, I have seen. From the time I came here, I have seen what has gone on through my life. I have cried. I have prayed and cried. I have cried. You know, let me tell you. When I was still in the flesh, I need to know. When I was still in the flesh, <clears throat> I passed senior four. I went to senior six. I went to university. Got a degree. I went back. Got master's. <laughs> I said, now, really. Here now, who can touch me? <laughs> yeah? You don't know. When you find me seated in my office where I was, you are joking. I would put on my shirt. Ha, you know. NSSF. And everyone knows that that is an organization that has money. Now, I have masters. I had even applied for a PhD, my sister, <laughs> my brother. You, let me tell you, God can trim us and bring us saying, you are joking. I was proud. And that's why I always ask God, do not bring that thing back again in my life. From the very time I left NSSF, I, I have never seen my documents. I have never seen them. I packed them somewhere. I packed them somewhere. In 2010, I was already having masters. I'm telling the truth. And that's why I was telling you, you don't need 
to come and begin explaining yourself in the kingdom of God. Nonsense. I am telling you, all that is nonsense. It will never help you. The kingdom of God, as I always say, the day you will go to heaven, there is no any day that God is going to put there that today we are receiving accountants, lawyers, what, nothing. All of us shall go as we came. Do you know how you came? Naked you came. Naked you will go. Hey, I think my time is coming to an end. You know I've taken some time without pre <laughs> preaching. Now, let me read the book of Isaiah. Chapter Isaiah 61, 17. It says, Instead of your shame, you, you will receive a double portion and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And you will inherit a double portion in your land. And the everlasting joy will be yours. When you give your burden unto the Lord, this is what is going to happen unto you. When you accept that Jesus is Lord, this is what God is promising. As I'm coming to an end. Even, that's why I say in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11. He promises and he says, my sister, my brother, I have a great and a good plan for you. There is no any bad plan that I have for you. It is only the devil that has the worst plan for us. John chapter 10 verses 10. He says, there is nothing good that comes from the evil one. There is nothing good. When you tell someone to give his life to Christ, you say, man, I still want to live my life to the fullest. Look at a stupid and foolish virgin. I still need to live my life to the fullest. People think if you give your life to Christ, you are limited. Something is limiting you. Life to the fullest into this world. And when Jesus is saying in John 10, 10, that the mission of the devil is just to destroy and steal. There is nothing that comes out of him. When he wants to give you, say, give me your daughter. Give me your mother. Give me your this. But our God does not put any clothes when he wants to bless you. And when he blesses you, that is it. It's only the devil shall, that shall remove it there. You understand? So today, in the book of John 3, 16, he's telling you that because I loved you, I gave my only son to come and die for you. That was a perfect sacrifice. Someone, a king, to give his son, the creator to give his son for you. You. Look at you. The creator has given his son. Look at you. The creator has given his son. And he has died for you. <laughs> and you are playing around with it. And that's why he's saying, just your burden is what I need. Your burden is what I need. As I'm coming to an end, I wanted, you see, Brian, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> Brian puts, he had a verse when he was preaching on Friday. Job chapter 42 verses 10. Job prayed for others. My brother, my sister, let's learn how to pray for others as I'm coming to an end. That's why in Job 41.10, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. God is just waiting for you to pray for change, for I don't know. <laughs> God is waiting for It is hard to pray for someone when you're going through a difficult moment. But that's how we can be blessed. You who is watching me. Yeah? Melissa, Master. Pray for your classmate to have wisdom and it will come unto you. The Lord will bless you. Pray for others. I know it is hard for you to begin playing for your competitor that give her more wisdom. <laughs> do you know, can, can you do that? But this is what God is telling you. that Pray for the one whom you think defeats you so that I can add you more than what he has. You know, Things of God are very easy, but yet very difficult. <laughs> Do you know that? Things of God are just very easy. But you know, but they are very difficult. Why? Because the devil is always behind it. Do you know, I always give an example. I used to struggle with the 10%. You know, I can get 100,000. To pick 10,000 ceiling was very hard. Because those are things of God. But it was easier for me to pick a seed of 30,000 and give. But then, but that ten, just 10,000. Mm -mm. 
Why? Because the word of God is behind it. There is a, a, a commandment about, uh, behind it. It is until you will when you see the day you will see that you don't have any problem now with giving them but know it that <laughs> your name is written in heaven as it is written in the book of Luke chapter 10 verses 20. You shall be happy that day that indeed your name has been written to him. It is not easy. It is not easy. 10%. You can be in position to give a seed of 30,000 but a tithe of 10,000. It is very hard. They can call you, we have a need here, we have a need here, you know, we have a need here. You, you are pulling 50,000, you are pulling what? But you fail to give a tithe of 10,000 shillings. I'm telling you. That's why they say, things of God are very easy and yet very difficult. They are very difficult. So today, God is telling you, you are suffering because you have refused to give him your yoke. You have refused to give him your yoke. It is the reason why you are suffering. It is properly written everywhere. Yeah. God has promised to you that ask and I shall give it unto you. When you read in the book of John 14, 14, it is there. When you read the book of Matthew 7, 7, it is there. When you read in Jeremiah 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 it is there. Whereby say, you ask me. Ask me. Ask even when you go to the book of Mark 11, 24. You will find it there. He said, you are suffering because you have asked him not. You are suffering because you have refused to give me your yoke so that I can fight for you. I have like, I think 10 minutes. Papa, today I don't know when you... But I started late. I started 30 minutes late, but now. God, have mercy. Just forgive me. But you know, I, you know, I had, I had taken time I need, I need some time. I need some time to come and really. But God, I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you for this day. Because of time, I want to advise you today. I want to advise you quietly. Even when I'm talking. Quietly. That the Lord God is just asking you, pleading unto you, that give me that burden that you think is hard, that I cannot do and I show you that I can do it. God is just waiting for you to take that decision. Come and you will see what he's going to do in your life. This morning, give your life unto Christ. Evangelists, preachers of the word, pastors, do not and stop preaching the gospel of sympathy. Telling people that if you give too much, you will see the kingdom of heaven. If you donate, you will see the kingdom of heaven. Never. The Bible, and I always repeat it, John chapter 3, verse 3, you read through. He says, verily, verily, I tell you, my sister, my son, my brother, anyone, my beloved, if you have refused to give your life to Christ, you are not going to see my father. You have denied me. The word is that. Stop lying, people. That if you give too much, if you, you will see God. Never. You, you, you see people, you know. By the way, you people, you will be surprised when you, will get, you get these people in heaven. Are you sure? When they have not said what Jesus has said, unless he's not the son of God. But indeed, if he came from heaven and he came here and he made a statement that unless you give your life to Christ, what is written, and you say, for you go and say, those who give too much will see no God, you will see them in heaven. It will not happen. Thank you so much for listening to me. I bless God for this day. Let me say a word of prayer. Father, I want to thank you so much for this day. I want to bless your name. I know this word is going to be a change in someone's life. Thank you so much for giving us, God giving us a word of truth. We bless your name. We honor your name. This morning, on this Sabbath day, we have prayed all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those who are around say, Amen. Thank you so much.